Today in this video, let us discuss about the pharmacology of opioids in easy way. So many types of drugs are included in the category of opioids. For example, morphine, codeine, and we can also have, we have the semi-synthetic and synthetic opioids like the oxymorphone, oxycodone, meperidine, pentazosin. Similarly, other drugs like the fentanyl, alfentanyl, sufentanyl, which are the potent drugs within this opioid category, and diphenoxylate, methadone. In this way, we have so many types of opioids, but all these opioids are not acting in a similar way. If you have the opioids like morphine, codeine, fentanyl are having the more affinity towards the mu receptors. Whereas if you have the drugs like the pentazosin can act as mixed agonist antagonist with more agonistic action on the kappa receptors. Now let's see what are the different types of opioid receptors and what is their role. Now these opioids can act on the three types of opioid receptors. One is the mu receptors, second is the delta receptors and third one is the kappa receptors. The mu receptors are mainly responsible for the central analgesia and delta receptors for the peripheral analgesia and kappa receptors for the spinal analgesia. In this way, opioids can produce the analgesic action at central, spinal as well as peripheral levels. But most of the opioids are acting on the mu receptors which produce the high analgesia. But at the same time, they produce a euphoria, respiratory depression as well as addiction with the opioids. Even these opioid receptors are distributed in different way but all these opioid receptors are G protein coupled receptors coupled with the decrease in the cyclic AMP as well as they are also associated with the increased opening of potassium channels which produce the hyperpolarization and closing of the calcium channels which results in the prevention of depolarization. In this way opioid receptors mainly produce the inhibitory response. Opioids produce a central inhibition which produces a sedation as well as a loss of nociception. That's why opioids are used as analgesic agents. But interestingly, opioids can also produce few of the stimulatory actions on few of the organs, which may not be related to their action on the opioid receptors. So now, in order to understand the pharmacological actions of these opioids in an easy way, let us divide these pharmacological actions into two categories, where few of the actions are related with the inhibitory response, and other actions are related with the stimulatory response. So now, opioids can produce inhibitory response at nociceptive neurons, GI smooth muscle, respiratory system, and few of the smooth muscles like the ureter, bladder, and uterus. At all of these targets, opioids can produce the inhibitory response. On the other hand, opioids can also produce a simulatory action on few of the organs like mast cells, oculomotor nerve, gallbladder, and CTZ, chemoreceptor trigger zone. So when we classify the action of opioids into these two categories, the inhibitory response and stimulatory response, we can easily understand the farm class actions of opioids. And here the inhibitory response produced by opioids are mainly related with the opioid receptors. But most of the stimulatory actions are not related with the opioid receptors. And these may be due to other mechanisms. For example, opioids can act as toxic chemicals, thereby they stimulate the CTZ, resulting in the nausea and vomiting. So this action is not related with the opioid receptors. This is only because of the chemical nature of the opioids. So now let us go one by one and let us see what is the action of opioids on these organs. So let us start with the inhibitory actions of opioids. The first one is the nociceptive neurons. Particularly nociceptive neurons are going to send the pain signals which are perceived by the higher centers within the brain resulting in the pain sensation. So the main action of the opioids is to produce the analgesia. So they are going to decrease the nociception that is a pain sensation. That's why opioids are used as analgesics. And we know that another category of drugs like the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can also produce the analgesia. But these drugs mainly produce the analgesia at the peripheral level by inhibition of the Cox pathway. And these NSAIDs can also be used to control the fever as well as inflammation. On the other hand, opioids are not going to control the inflammation. So these drugs are not useful in the inflammatory conditions. They are only controlling the nociception that may be associated with the various types of physiological disorders. And compared with the NSAIDs, opioids produce a very high analgesia. So that's why whenever the pain is not controlled by the NSAIDs, opioids can be given to control the pain sensation. And again, we can find another difference between the opioids and NSAIDs. So when these opioids are used for a longer period, they can produce some tolerance 
and because of this the pain sensation may be further increased and within the patients we can observe hyperalgesia that is increased sensation of the pain as well as allodynia allodynia is a condition of nociception that is stimulated by non nociceptive stimuli so even a non painful stimuli can produce a pain in the patients because of the hyperreactivity of the nociceptive neurons within the patients and this may be related to the tolerance developed towards the opioids and opioids can also produce a bradycardia even they are not directly acting on the heart and this is again related to the central neurons opioids can produce inhibitory response on the few of the centers within the medulla thereby they can reduce the heart rate resulting in the bradycardia in this way opioids mainly produce a inhibitory response within the nociceptive neurons as well as at few of the centers within the medulla and we can also observe another quite opposite action of the opioids when these drugs are acting on the mu receptors they can produce the one of the condition euphoria euphoria is a state of well being which may result in the addiction problem but when these drugs are acting on the kappa receptors they can produce a dysphoria a state of discomfort in the patients both these actions are quite opposite and they are related to the two different opioid receptors so drugs which are having the more affinity towards the mu receptors mainly produce a euphoria similarly those drugs which are having the more affinity towards the kappa receptors produce the dysphoria for example drugs like morphine heroin heroin is the diastyl morphine which is having the high euphoria and fentanyl fentanyl is a highly potent analgesic all these drugs are going to produce a euphoria by acting on the mu receptors whereas dysphoria is going to produce by few of the drugs like the pentajosin which which is acting like a mixed agonist antagonist and this drug acts as an antagonist on the mu receptors but agonist on the kappa receptors therefore it produces a dysphoria as one of the side effect in this way opioids mainly acting on the nociceptive neurons to produce a inhibitory response and they can produce either euphoria or dysphoria based on the type of receptor that is going to be activated second one is the gi smooth muscle again on the gi smooth muscles opioids can produce inhibitory response so they can decrease the gi motility which mainly results in the constipation and they can also decrease the gastric emptying rate so they can produce a delay in the gastric emptying which may reduce the absorption of few of the other drugs which are co-administered with the opioids the constipation is one of the important effect that is going to be produced by opioids and since these opioids are going to produce a constipation they can be used to treat the diarrhea for example one of the drug is a loperamide which is particularly used as an anti diarrheal agent this drug is not having any analgesic action but it mainly shows the anti diarrheal action by decreasing the gi motility third one is the respiratory system what is the effect of the opioids on the respiratory system interestingly opioids are not directly affecting the lungs but their main inhibitory action is on the respiratory center respiratory center is controlling the ventilation rate normally this respiratory center is going to be activated by increased levels of the carbon dioxide within the plasma so when the carbon dioxide is going to be accumulated within the body it results in the increased partial pressure of the carbon dioxide but opioids are going to inhibit this respiratory center such that they are going to decrease the sensitivity to the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide so this results in the accumulation of the carbon dioxide within the body which finally results in the respiratory depression in this way opioids can inhibit the respiratory center thereby they produce a respiratory depression and again this effect is more associated with the mu receptors so that's why those drugs which are having the high affinity towards the mu receptors can produce the respiratory depression fourth one is the other smooth muscles opioids can also produce the relaxation of the other smooth muscles like the uterus as well as bladder they can produce a bladder relaxation as well as uterine relaxation but at the therapeutic level these are very less significant now let us see the stimulatory actions of the opioids first one is the mast cells opioids can act on the mast cells and they can stimulate the mast cells such that these mast cells can be degranulated and they can release one of the important mediator that is the histamine this is to be acts as an allergic substance so it can produce few of the symptoms in the patients like itching skin rashes even histamine can produce a vasodilatation resulting in the hypotension in this way opioids can increase the allergic response as well as they can decrease the blood pressure by releasing the one of the important mediator histamine on stimulation of the mast cells second one is the oculomotor nerve so opioids can stimulate this oculomotor nerve which is going to supply to the eye so this nerve when it is going to be stimulated it can act on the eye to produce the pupillary constriction 
particularly parasympathetic fibers are going to be supplied along with the oculomotor nerve and just like the parasympathetic system opiates can also produce a pupillary constriction so they can produce the meiosis and this is very important because many of the drugs which produce a respiratory depression they produce the midriasis pupillary dilatation but the opiates are the only one category of drugs which produce the respiratory depression along with the pupillary constriction you can see the respiratory depression is an inhibitory response and pupillary constriction is a stimulatory response on the oculomotor nerve and opiates can decrease the pupillary size and they can produce one of the condition pinpoint pupils which is used to identify the opiates now third one is a gallbladder so what is the effect of these opiates on the gallbladder they are going to produce a stimulatory response so we have seen that within the gi smooth muscle they produce an inhibitory response but on the gallbladder they produce a stimulation such that they are going to increase the contraction of the gallbladder as well as they increase the contraction of the biliary sphincter and because of this they can increase the intra biliary pressure in this way opiates can increase the biliary colic by increasing the biliary pressure that's why opiates are contraindicated in controlling the pain associated with the gallstones because in this condition opiates are going to increase the intra biliary pressure which which may increase the pain associated with the gallstones that's why opiates are contraindicated in the patients who are having the gallstones fourth one is the chemoreceptor trigger zone this is again one more important action of the opiates all we have discussed the opiates are acting like few of the toxic chemicals and they can act on one of the reason in within the ctz that is the area postrema this area postrema is one of the important center within the ctz and when these opiates are going to stimulate this center they can produce a nausea and vomiting and this is the important side effect of many of the opiates and particularly morphine can produce a nausea and vomiting this morphine is a modified phenanthrene derivative when it is going to be hydrolyzed it can give one of the metabolized epomorphine this epomorphine acts as a dopamine agonist that's why it can be used in the treatment of parkinson disease but this drug also acts as an emetic because it is derived from the opiates so morphine epomorphine all this can stimulate the ctz to induce the nausea and vomiting and epomorphine is particularly used as emetic in case of any poisoning to induce the nausea and vomiting so these are the four stimulatory actions of the opiates what are the side effects many of the pharmacological actions of the opiates are nothing but the side effects so opiates can produce sedation because they produce a cns depression and they produce a constipation because they produce a relaxation of the gi smooth muscle and nausea and vomiting by stimulation of the ctz euphoria by acting on the mu receptors within the cns and meiosis by pupillary constriction skin rashes by release of the histamine hypotension again because of the histamine and apart from this at toxic doses opiates can also produce the other side effects they can produce a respiratory depression and they can also produce a severe sedation because of the more central depression and if it is not treated with the opiate antagonist they can produce a coma as well as death in the patients in this way opiates can produce a cns as well as respiratory depression at the toxic doses so that's about the pharmacological actions of opiates in order to understand these pharmacological actions we can divide them into two categories the inhibitory actions as well as stimulatory actions the inhibitory actions are mainly related with the action of opiates on the opiate receptors whereas most of the stimulatory actions are not related with the opiate receptors the main inhibitory actions are inhibition of the noceptive neurons which results in the analgesia and inhibition of the gi smooth muscle which results in the constipation inhibition of the respiratory center which may result in the respiratory depression and inhibition of the few of the other smooth muscles like the uterus bladder and ureter on the other hand opiates can also produce a stimulatory response particularly they can stimulate the mast cells to release the histamine which produce the skin rashes hypotension and they can stimulate the ctz to induce the nausea and vomiting they can also increase the contraction of the gallbladder and biliary sphincter resulting in the increased intra biliary pressure and they can also stimulate the oculomotor nerve which produce a pupillary constriction resulting in the pinpoint pupils so that's about the pharmacological actions of opiates hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video